This is Editorial 2-1 in Chapter 2 of the GIS Tutorial Book. And I've already opened ArcMap and uh, have a blank map here. We want to open Tutorial 2-1. So let's do an open here. And there's Tutorial 2-1. I'm going to open that up and save it. So now let's do a Save As. And this one needs to go in the GIS folder with the other tutorials. So let's save it. Now we're on the top of page 49. Click the Add Data button, browse through the data folder to New York City Geodatabase, click Neighborhoods, and Add. So here's our Add Data button. And we want to go to the New York City Geodatabase. And we want Neighborhoods and click Add. In the Table of Contents, double-click the Polygon symbol and select Hollow. And an outline width of 1.15 that's black. Okay, so let's go change our view here. This by drawing order. And let's click on this. And we want hollow and a black outline, which it looks like we already have, but we want a width of 1.15. And let's click on OK. Now we're on number three. In the table of contents, right click the neighborhoods layer. Go to properties. Go to the Labels tab, turn on our checkbox, and we want name, and we want 10 as the size, and click the Symbol button, and, uh, Edit Symbol. This Halo business is buried kind of deeply here. And then go to Mask and Halo, and for the size it says 1.5. And click OK, and OK, and OK. Well, that's kind of ugly. OK, now let's go to page 50. And we want to go to our bookmarks. And we want Lower Manhattan, which I think is this area right in here. OK, now it looks a lot better. OK, now we're on, uh, we're going to do your turn at the bottom of page 50. Add the water feature class from the New York City Geodatabase with a blue symbol and no outline. So let's go add and water. Add. And we want blue. Lake seems like a good option for that. And we want uh, no outline. And click on OK. Then we want to go to um, Layers for this and go to its properties. And we want to turn on the labels for this. And we want Times New Roman bold italic with a font size of 12. I'm just going to leave it at Arial for now. Bold italic and a font size of 12. And click on OK says we want that layer below neighborhoods so just click over here and we should be able to click and drag it down there we go okay and it says also that we've got this labeled several times that's okay though we'll just leave that now we're at the bottom of page uh, 50 add and display polygons using unique symbols number one click the add data button and we want to Select Zoning Land Use. Click on Add. Drag it below the Neighborhoods layer in the Table of Contents. Right click on the Zoning Land Use layer and we want to go to its Properties. And then the Symbology tab. 
which describes what it will look like. In the show panel, click categories and unique values. So here's the show panel and we want categories and unique values. Under the value field right here, click land use. Click add all values and double click the symbol beside battery park. Click fill color and choose apple dust, which they say is column six, row seven. There we go. And then we want gray 30% as our outline color. Okay, that's 30. Click on OK. And um, it says now assign a gray 30% outline to the remaining symbols using the following colors. And you can change all of the outline colors by choosing uh, by multiple selection and right clicking and properties for the selected symbols. Okay, that's going to take a while, so uh, and that's pretty straightforward. It's just like we did with um, Battery Park. So I'm going to pause the video here and make those updates. Okay, I have finished applying all of the colors. This should be pretty similar to what we see on the bottom of page 52. My green for park looks a little different than theirs. Uh, most of the rest of it looks reasonably close. Uh, this is the correct color though, it must just be a, the way it's printed. Okay, now we're on label zoning features on the middle of page 52. In the table of contents, right click the zoning land use layer and click properties and we want to go to the labels tab. And we want to label the features in this layer. And we want to select zone as the label field. Six as the text symbol size seems really small. Gray 60% as the color. There we go. Click on OK. And we will skip your turn on the top of page 53. Now let's go to the bottom of page 53. Click the Add Data button, browse through the data folder to the New York City Geo Database, click Facilities, Add. So, Add Data button. New York City Geo Database should open by default, and we want Facilities, and click on Add. In the Table of Contents, we want to right click on Facilities. We want to go to its Properties. And then we want to go to the Definition Query tab. And then we want to click on Query Builder. Now we're on the top of page 54. And at the top, I want to double click on Facility T. And click Equals as the logical operator. And click Get Unique Values. And I want 4901. We have to scroll a ways to get to that. And double click on it. So if you're familiar with SQL, uh, we're creating a SQL command here. We want to select everything from the facilities table where facility T is equal to the number 4901. Then we want to click OR. And then we want facility table equals 4902. So we're going to get, if it's 4901 or 4902, that's what we're going to see here. And we want to use 4903, I guess, as well. Let's scroll down here one more. So let's go or facility T equals 
4903. So we're just going to get those three values. And one thing about creating a query in SQL, you can't just say we're facility equals 4901 or 4902 or 4903. Everything in between the ors here must be a complete logical test or Boolean expression or condition, whatever you want to call it. But it's got to have something on each side of the equal sign. You can click on OK. We're on the bottom of page 54, number 10 now. Click on OK again. What we see now is just the food facilities. And now let's go to page 55, display points using unique symbols. In the table of contents, we want to right click on the facilities layer. And we want to go to properties at the bottom. And we want to go to the symbology tab. What symbology? In the show panel, click categories, unique values. Click fact type underscore underscore one as the value field. So let's scroll down. I don't see that here yet. Let's be near the bottom. There we go. We want to add all the values. And we do three different symbols. Double click the symbol beside food pantry. So there's right there. And we want square one size 12. Click on OK, and we want Joint Soup Kitchen. Double click on that, and we want to cross size 12. Cross 2, that is. So here's cross 2, size 12. Whoops, went too far. Click OK. Now we want soup kitchen. Double click on the symbol. We want circle one and size 12 for that one as well. Click on OK. Clear the checkbox beside all other values and click on OK. And now we can see each of the three different types of food facilities. Each has its own unique symbol. Okay, now let's go to page 56, number 8. Rename the facilities layer Food Facilities. So let's go over here and right click. And let's choose Properties. And under General here, right now it's called Facilities. And we want to rename it Food Facilities. So let's go to the beginning and put Food. We want a size label N, I'm sorry, facility N is the um, label. So let's go to our labels tab here. We want to label the features in this layer. And we want facility N. Where's facility N? Right there. And we want size 6. And we want fur green text with a white halo. So let's go to symbol here. And for the color, fur green. Let's see. Doesn't tell us exactly where that is. It looks like it's kind of a dark green. There we go. Fur green. And we want to go to edit symbol here. Click on mask. And we want a halo. And it says white. That's the default color. We don't need to change that then. Click on OK. Click on OK. Click on OK. Click on OK. And now we should see for every one of these black food items, it's going to be in a green text. And it's going to have a white halo behind it. Now let's go to page 57. Zoom to the Lower East Side neighborhood. OK, here it is. Got a lot of text there to look at. So we want to zoom to that. So let's go to our magnifying glass here and let's check out. Let me see. It looks like it goes from, oh, I'd say right up around here somewhere down to about here. And this should kind of match what we see on the bottom of page 57. 
we want to add some data so I'll click on our add data button and we want Manhattan streets so here's Manhattan streets click on add so now we've got all the streets there they're currently in purple and let's go and double click on the symbol here and we want gray 40 percent for our color click on OK and now the streets kind of fade into the background a little bit more number five click label features in this layer um, select I'm sorry right click on it go to properties and now we want to go to the labels tab I'm going to label the streets so we want to turn on label features in this layer and our label field is street we don't need to change that six as the symbol size and gray 70 percent as the color 60 70 click placement properties right here and we want to do conflict detection which is this tab up here we've got so many labels here that it, uh, they're going to be overlapping one another so this is going to try to help us um, make that less of a problem select low for the label weight so here's label weight we want to select low click on OK click on OK and those are the street names so if we have something that overlaps a street name it will appear on top of the street name instead of the street name appearing on top so we kind of want those to fade into the background and that is the end of tutorial 2-1 so let's go ahead and make sure we save this and then we'll continue with tutorial 2-2